Well, Ulysses, on today's episode, we will continue our positional preview series. Heck, we're really, really close to the start of the regular season, so we better wrap these bad boys up. Starting pitchers and the layout that that will be to open the season is what we'll discuss today. We have four solid names, but boy, that fifth spot, that's where it could be fun. So let's get started right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays and email us anytime, Locked On Rays at gmail.com with your hot takes, comments, concerns, and so forth. All right, on today's episode, let's talk starting pitching rotation and what that could look like to start the season. Uh, I guess it's now the worst kept secret within the organization is we know who numero uno is going to be on this uh, one through five. It's going to be Zach Eflin. Well-deserved getting the opening day nod, uh, particularly after what he did last season going 16 and eight, three and a half ERA, 31 starts, career high, 178 innings. Uh, and uh, all that he did on the field and off the field as far as providing positive leadership, guidance, team bonding, and so forth. So yes. Eflin obviously penciled in as number one, and then going down two through five, um, Ulysses, I assume we're in agreement that Aaron Savali will be the number two? Yeah, uh, I think, well, first of all, with Zach um, Eflin, very well deserved and i just want to say i've always really liked and and admire how the rays organization uh works their opening day starters and by that i mean it's not the name it's not the the oh who should be like you probably should give it to the it's it's not that it's who had the best season last year? They've always operated that way. Like, if you think back in 2010 and James Shields was James Yields because all he yielded was runs, um, 2011 opening day starter, boom, give it to David Price. It, it should have been the, the veteran, Shields, but no, they gave it to Price. Like, it's always been that way. I've always enjoyed that. So, Eflin, awesome for him to get that. Savale does uh has to slide into that number two role i think number one and number two are pretty much set okay now going back to eflin real quick because i did kind of bury the lead here and do want to pose this question if eflin more or less replicates what he did this past season so basically copy paste 2024 do you believe that he would also be the opening day starter in 2025? Without With a doubt. the knowledge that Shane McClanahan would be back, Drew Rasmussen would be back, Jeffrey Springs would be back, on and on it goes. No, no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind that he would be uh, number one. And I think all the other guys, because of the Shields uh, tradition that started with him, that rotation, they, they know – that they have to cheer on for the next guy. And yeah. they would cheer for Zach Eflin. They, hey, look, we've talked about how Zach didn't know what he was kind of getting himself into in that clubhouse. Like right. he, he was thrown he... into the fire of, you've got to be the leader. You're yeah. the guy now. You're the, hey, you're the, the guy. million dollar man. Hey, thanks. And he's like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. And he stepped up and, and did tremendously from what we've heard um the quotes coming out of the clubhouse. So no, yeah, I, there's, there's no way that you take it away again. I really appreciate that it's who had the best season last year. That's who gets the ball. And so if he's the best one, then sure. But if Savali is better than Eflin, you know, if if somebody else steps up and and, and has a great, terrific season, better who, than who's him. Who's this year's Jeffrey Springs? That might be the question. Who's there this year's go. Zach Littell? Maybe it is Zach Littell. For all Maybe it is Zach Littell. That would be nice. But yeah, that, that's that Eflin, Zavale, 
back to back punch is definitely set in stone. Now, three, four, five, especially five, that gets a little bit hairy because with Pepio, okay, Littell, I could see them going Pepio thir uh, third in the rotation. I could see them going Littell. I would, yeah. if, you know, because we have to make a decision here um, if for the episode, I would, I would lean towards Littell being the number right. three starter just because he, what, again, what did you do last year? And he did tremendous work for the for the race last year as a starter. So I think you have to award him that he earned it. He earned. You're not just giving it to him. He earned that number three spot. I agree. I think that it's not necessarily sexy to say that entering the season, Zach Littell is our number three. But based on what he did last year, I think it's fair to give him that opportunity, that shot. And maybe in a way, little gamesmanship action, it allows i don't know if gamesmanship's the right word but it maybe takes a little pressure off of pepio and also gives him something to work towards as well being a young pitcher and an inexperienced starter at that so yeah. i think um that is probably how it's going to shape up which not to be a debbie downer or negative nancy but the eflin savali latell combination then we'll get to fours uh four and five is it fair to say or suggest that this opening day uh, rotation is doesn't have as much punch or excitement as previous Rays iterations? Like, there's because McClanahan's not in there, because Glassnell's not in there, you don't have James Shields in there, you don't have Matt Garza in there, you don't have Blake Snell in there. It just seems to have a little... Erasmo Ramirez, Nate Carnes vibes. I don't know if that's fair. I just wanted to throw it out there that, or or even even uh, more in the the recent past, 2021, where you had Waka in Hill in Yarbrough and company as well. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's 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 not definitely the flashiest. It's not the most name recognition. I mean, if they all pop off awesome like the quality is there to have a good season but it, it it does feel like we would have like jake faria matt andres and somebody else yeah. you know alex cobb like that 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 tri triumvirate right there seems kind of like what this would be with uh eflin savale and and latell but it's it's not flashy, but is there quality enough to put up numbers that you would be happy about as a race fan? Certainly. It's just not as punchy as we're used to because, again, we the standard has been set so high with pitching with the Rays as a fan that, yeah, you see the, the, the numbers on the back and you're like, hmm, but the quality is, is certainly there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, number four, are we in agreement then that it gets nodded to Pepio? Love the reasoning that you gave, though, by the way. Uh, Pepio, not only something to uh, work hard and also lower the pressure, lower the, the temperature a little bit. Like, we're not counting on you, kid, like, right away. You can right. just do your thing. I like that. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 tease the number five here because the number five is really, you know, maybe the more intriguing aspect of this as to who is that guy going to be. So before we dive into that we uh, have to tell you something very important and that is this uh prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in north america they are the easiest and most exciting way to play dfs it's uh it's just you against the numbers remember that uh instead of battling thousands of other players including pros and sharks you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Uh, reminder here, conference tournaments are here, which means the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. Uh, be sure to check out prize picks for all of the action for both men's and women's college basketball. Another cool feature, prize picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So be sure to check that out and look into that uh importantly here though download the prize picks app today and use code locked on mlb l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n mlb for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars 
So important. I'll repeat it again. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, Ulysses, the number five to start the season, who does it go to? in your eyes well if you're on youtube and you're hitting that like button right now just hit that like button it's really easy or the subscribe button if you haven't yet options are tash bradley shane boz now yuki Uwasawa, chris davinsky being stretched out tyler alexander being stretched out jacob Wagaspack being stretched out jake otterese making his big raise return even jacob lopez is on the plate uh that's eight options right there for one lonely yeah. fifth Starter spot, a lot of good names there. I think if we're all being truthful, the first two options seem the likeliest to get the most innings as a fifth starter there, Tosh and or Shane Boz. But we know, Kevin, about that dirty, dirty I-word injuries. Right. Yes. So that basically takes them out of the equation for the start of the season. I don't have any doubts. And quite frankly, I'm hopeful and encouraged by the idea that the end of year rotation is different than the start of year rotation. And usually you don't want to say that. You don't want no. to, you want your first five names to be your last five names at the end of the year. But yeah. in the Rays case, you almost want, you know, three fifths, four fifths new faces, assuming the health of the guys that are on the shelf right now and some of the young players stepping up and, and really solidifying themselves um, as far as that goes. If Tosh is healthy, if Shane Boss is healthy, and then if Jeffrey Springs is healthy, um, a lot of guys in that rotation right now are going to be looking over their shoulder. Yeah. Uh, and that's that, three yeah. spots right there, you know? And, fr and frankly, it, it might all work out because I highly doubt that all five of these guys that start the season will remain healthy throughout the end of the season as well. We just know that's uh, the game of baseball these days. Yeah, and I, so like we've talked about this endless times with if people putting up a, a starter uh, rotation, like, oh, this is the best five in, in baseball. It's like, nah, a rotation has to be like A9 deep. Then yeah. you can talk about the best rotation. If you're talking five, that means nothing to me. Right. That means nothing to you. And it honestly, it should mean nothing to you too. If you're, if you're watching this and listening to this, like people get hurt and we, and you know, it, it's... It's just a normal thing when you're throwing 93 mile an hour sliders under 12 yeah. seconds for like, yeah, two I hours. think the, the pitch clock and the extra stress that that um, creates is, is maybe causing an uptick in some of the pitching injuries to some extent. And, and the fact that, you know, guys are throwing wacky hard stuff as well. Uh, and I think, I mean, this is a larger discussion but probably goes back to all the strain that they experienced through little league and high school and travel ball and uh it just adds up over time that's why you see uh i don't know shane mcclanahan having his third tommy john surgery by the time he's 26 27 that's whatever, not normal. maybe so that, that's yeah. not normal yeah so if you started chasing an mlb with stuff rather than speed that any romero's of the world were more valuable right. than the guy who was throwing 91 and 92 and could actually locate it Whatever. Um, that's a, yeah, that's a different discussion for another day, but I think we would be uh, very lively during that discussion, uh, us both. So to start the season, I feel like we both do want to see what now Yuki Wasawa can do. Uh, I'm very intrigued. I'm incredibly intrigued. Like, what can you do? Like, well, let's see what you have in the tank. Now, I don't think that he's going to be the the guy getting the call right away. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I want him to, but yeah. I don't think so. They're and going to slow play him. Uh, just like they may yeah. be again, apples and oranges here, maybe should have slow played Yoshi Satsugo, uh, before, you know, crowning him King and giving him that, that big opportunity. God. Let's prove yourself in triple a first. Maybe, you know, you know what it was though? Uh, I think Yoshi Satsugo could have succeeded, but the issue was COVID season. Like, you, yeah, you're, that really you're really getting to a new country, a new way of, and then everything shuts down. Now you are, and you're away from everybody. You can't go back. You just, yeah. I don't know. That was tough on on Yoshi. Yeah, that's just the absolute worst timing for it. Gets, it gets. I don't think to, it gets talked en enough about how that was tough for Yoshi Sutsugo. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. no, I'm, uh, um, I, I agree with you there. So, no, all right, we, we, can't, uh, we, we can't delay this anymore. Who's your pick for the number five starter to start the season? Not necessarily who you want it to be, right. but who do you think it will be? I think it's going to be, if he's healthy, uh, Jake Odorizzi. If they like this oh, stuff. Oh, wow. I think Jake Odorizzi is like, hey, let's see what you have. Can you still throw? Everything's working fine. I think they they would opt for like the safe option of Jake Odorizzi. Um, at least that's that's my take. Counterpoint, he was added to the roster pretty recently, so... I would imagine there's some lead time to build him up and to get him to, I don't know if he'd be a four and dive, five and dive, three and two thirds and dive. I think he might need some more marinating before they're ready to say, okay, you're our number five starter. Counterpoint to the counterpoint. Okay. The man is older than us. He has been through spring training after spring training. When you're 37, 38 years old, uh, you know what your body needs. You know how your body operates. At least you should better than when you were yeah. 22, 23. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that if he goes and says to them, look, I just need three starts, bro. I just need three starts and I can give you four innings. And okay. knowing the Rays, if their bullpen, which we have not done that uh, episode yet, but if it includes a Tyler Alexander, if it includes a Chris Davinsky that you are supposedly stretching out, guess what? Jake Odorizzi giving you three, four innings as a fifth starter is not that big of a deal when you have, you know, Davinsky from the bullpen. Okay, give me three. Hey, Tyler Alexander, give me three. I don't think I don't think that would be such an issue. But yeah. your counterpoint is more than valid. Um, this is, and you mentioned him. This is who I think, and again, not necessarily from game one to one sixty two, but the number five right now. Mm-hmm. Tyler Alexander. That's Lefty. who I think that they will go with. And you mentioned it there. I think that the Rays and other organizations, they at least want to have one lefty yeah. to keep the lefty hitters off balance. And to some extent, the righty hitters, because they're just not used to seeing that many lefties. It's almost um, kind of a paradox in that respect of, uh, you know, you just don't see that many arms like that and little recency bias um there was a article that came out uh he's he's working the innings he's he's working the pitch totals he's getting ground balls inducing weak contact filling up the strike zone maybe the the defenders like playing behind him but i think it is somewhat important especially when there's it's probably a a negligible talent difference between a tyler alexander and a jacob wagas and a fill in the blank why not throw a lefty into the fold and and kind of play off that to some extent i like it i like it um so. and and with you the you can't just throw out righties uh i even to the righties like you're saying like you get in a groove yeah oh i'm facing a right and facing a righty. even if it's you know the, the splits are not beneficial but if you keep seeing something all the time it, you're going to do better especially as a hitter right, right. so when you, even if you put it a lefty like that's a change and yeah. and, and you need that now I'm trying to think on the spot the rosters of the AL East. Obviously, with with the Yankees, you got yeah the Yankees are going to have a lot of lefties. Soto. You need a lefty for, to neutralize Juan Soto there. And Verdugo. Uh, but, and Verdugo. I mean, yeah, so uh, the Blue Jays are pretty right-handed friendly, except for KK. Hello, you got to yeah. neutralize that boy. Assuming um, he's healthy. Yeah, he's able to play. He was last year. He was last year. He was great. Um, and then the Orioles, they got a couple switch hitters, and but a lot of righty power. If I yeah. if I'm remember correctly, so maybe there's something to that too. The Rays are like, well, within the division, we don't have that many lefties that we need to worry about. But I I don't disagree. I think it would be a good idea um, for Tyler Alexander. But really, like, look at those names with all those eight names. They're all going to get their they're all going to get their due. I I'm sure of it. I'm sure that yeah. they will. I I think this could be a year, and you know, I don't know if we're necessarily going to get to it on this episode, but. Eight of those guys, eight to 10 of those guys, I mean, we can just put name after name after name. They're going to get, I think, you know, 50 to 75 to 80 innings. Um, I think yeah. this could be a year where we don't, you know, have the true 
one through five. Maybe it's yeah. a one through four and you have a swing man here. You have an opener there. You have a bulk guy here. I think there's going to be a lot of shifting and playing around and injuries will inevitably be a part of the whole situation. But I mean, it is fun from the perspective of the fact that we're saying, Hey, we want to see Oda Rizzi in action. We want to see Uwasawa in action. We want to see some of these other guys in action. There might be even a dark horse candidate that we'll have to mention in the next segment as well. But, you know, that's what you want, right? You want something entertaining, something that, you know, you, that you're looking forward to. As a fandom, when you're looking at, the, at these na names, you're like, okay, well, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this guy. What can they do? And you know what? If you're excited about something, you got to get excited about Amazon Fire TV. Mm -hmm. My goodness, it is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can just plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes. In fact, Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free that includes all of us at the locked on family and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well so guess what you have to check out fire tv channels on fire tv and alexa devices if you haven't yet you should to learn more visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire tv i'll say one more time amazon.com slash Locked on fire TV. We have to talk about FanDuel. That's very important before we talk about Tyler Alexander. Thank you for uh, checking me there. Um, here's what you need to know. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. That is amazing, amazing stuff. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. I have a thought or two in mind on all that. Uh, just visit FanDuel.com slash LOCKDOWN, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. I'll repeat it again, FanDuel.com slash LOCKDOWN, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. So getting to uh, a final thought on Tyler Alexander, um, assuming that the end of the year rotation, which this would be pretty cool if you do have some combination thereof of Eflin, Savali, Rasmussen, Springs, Boss, slash Bradley, maybe Uasawa in there, and Alexander for one reason or the other gets kicked out of the shuffle, I still think there's a role for him as a Jalen Beeks type of you – come in, give two, three innings at a pop to uh, neutralize lefties or just give a, a different look of righty, lefty, lefty, righty, whatever it may be. So I 100%. think, uh, and, and I think he's played in, in multiple scenarios and roles when he was with Detroit and he does have the ability to, I don't want to say eat up innings, but he can get across the three digit mark if, if needed there. And different stuff than the other lefty that's probably going to make the bullpen and Garrett Clevenger, right? So yeah. Um, different release point. So I, it would be a smart thing to do a Jalen Beeks thing with him when if he gets kicked out into the bullpen, like you said, because it doesn't even have to be um, outs or innings. How you look at it with a, a guy like Tyler Alexander, it's get these six hitters. You're facing these next six hitters. You're facing yeah. these next seven hitters. Um, and you know, however many outs you get, that's 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 gravy. I I don't look. Is this the most stable rotation? that the race have have served in the last 10, 15 years? No, it's certainly not. Is there a lot of potential to be really good? Yes. Yeah. And it might not be top heavy, but I think when you look at all of those names that are options just for the fifth spot, I think you can really find quality in all of those names. Again, Tosh, Shane Boz, Uwasawa, Devensky, Alexander, Wagaspak, Odorizzi, Jacob Lopez. Like, that's nice to, to, to see that amount of depth because the, when right. the offseason started, Kev, 
that was our biggest concern about the rotation was like there ain't no depth. Yeah. Now you look around and you're like, OK, I'm intrigued about all of these names. And we haven't even gotten to the bullpen and what the relief arms and how they'll play uh, on the the next positional preview episode, because there should be some fun stability there to clean up things in the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth inning and so on. Uh, now, as far as dark horse candidates for the rotation, we mentioned a lot of names, uh, yeah. a lot of names at play. I really have, I guess, two, two and a half names. Um, Erasmo uh, Ramirez, he is a non-roster invite. I mean, right. you never know what can happen there. Uh, Mason Montgomery, I suppose. And then the one I think would be the most fun if he gets into play here, Brendan McKay. Yes. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. Brendan McKay would be the funnest dark horse available. And I yeah. think all, all race fans just would unite 100% which is a very difficult thing and nowadays to, to be 100% on something to be rooting for him. Like, I mean, it's just the this, this story of injury after injury after injury. If he actually gets back on that mound, Kev, and is able to pro provide some type of innings total for this team, yeah, that would be so enjoyable to watch. Like, whatever the, you know, hopefully it's good results. Um, but yeah, th that would be really fun. And I agree. I think that would be the funnest dark horse candidate. Now, Jacob Lopez, I think, could squeeze himself in that conversation as well uh, with those names that you said. And Erasmo right. Ramirez, don't. Um, he will go to AAA. Like, he does not mind that. He'll be like, okay, I have a rubber arm. I don't, I don't mind that at all. And last but not least, when you look at the depth charts on fan graphs for the race and you look at the projections, I was... Maybe this is just them being not as in tune. Yeah. With, or maybe they uh, haven't updated it. Right. Now, Yuki Uwasawa, he's not in the starting uh, pitching uh, names. He's in the okay. relief core. So that's okay. But then the projection, do you know what the projection is for his innings total? In I have no idea. I would guess close to triple digits. I would have thought so too, but now that he's in the relief cord, then you're like, okay, it can't be that. They have him tacked for 14 innings. What do they know? What do they think about now Yuki Iwasawa? They're just like, nope, 14 innings. That's about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's what's nuts going to on me. There. Yeah, that's that nuts. that seems a little surprising. I think at the end of the day that he'll get quadruple that at least or um, are we that enthused good. are we that enthused with Owasawa that maybe <laughs> that that could be it as well um that, that's possible but i mean he did uh turn down major league offers to sign a minor league deal with the rays uh i would think there's a a role in in some room for him but i'm glad you bring that up because it's hard to do percentage played with the, the open competition series but i do want to throw out a couple over unders based on some of the website projections that are out there and just get your reaction to this. Um, Zach Eflin over under 178 innings this season. Optimism, baby over. Okay. I'm going to say under because in this yeah. day and age with the Rays, you be everything has to go right. You really can't afford to miss a start. Um, no, no, you can't. And it, honestly, if you are averaging six innings per start, that's 29.6 starts that he yeah. would need to be making. Right. Um, so I'll say under there, uh, Savali okay. over under 141. Over. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I'll say slightly over. I'll be optimistic there. Uh, okay. Zach Littell, I saw somewhere they peg him at 153 over under. Under. I'm going to say under as well. Ryan Pepio, 131 over under. 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 Okay. I you? will also agree with that. Last question here. Beyond those four, who has the next most innings? Is it Bradley? Is it Boz? Is it Alexander? Is it Oda Rizzi? Is it Wagaspak? Is it somebody else I haven't mentioned yet? 
who is the guy that gets, I don't know, 120, 115, 110? I'll go with I'll go with uh Tosh. Okay. Assuming his right pectoral strain doesn't keep him too far back. And yeah, I think that they were kind of tank going to take their time with uh Shane Boz as it was already. So I will agree with you uh, yeah. on Taj Bradley, um, even though he won't necessarily start the season uh, in the one through five there. So, all right. Uh, any final thoughts to close this thing? I guess the, the conclusion is there's a lot of options out there. It, yeah. Again, might not be the sexiest one through five that we've ever seen in the Rays organization to start the year, but um, I think that they'll uh, patchwork and piecemeal it and ship and shaped uh shift and shape everything to uh to make it all work out at the end of the day and and do what they have to do until uh the good the the better more talented players come back into the uh the fold i'm more comfortable about this rotation on march 19th uh in the evening than i was when you know this off season started which right. is a good thing to be feeling. So yeah, that's yeah. it. It's hard to, it's crazy that we're so optimistic here. It's you wouldn't think that we would be thinking this when you trade Tyler glass now and Shane McClanahan's out for the season, but look, here we are. We know point. the organization. That's why, because you know, it, that's, that's the reason if, if you're looking from, from the outside, you might be thinking, Oh, the Rays are barely going to win 85 games. They find and a way. They find I mean, a way. at one point, Jeffrey Springs wasn't Jeffrey Springs. At one one point, Drew Rasmussen wasn't Drew Rasmussen. At one point, Zach Littell wasn't Zach Littell. And on and on it goes there. So, all right. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you tomorrow. 